Okay, so we have another official operating system on Raspberry Pi. So we've got Raspberry Pi OS, we've got Recallbox, and we've also got Ubuntu now. Thanks to Nico Bellic for mentioning this to me. Now, first of all, let's uh, quit out of this and go into normal Raspberry Pi OS so that it's familiar to everybody who's doing it as a tutorial. So we can do desktop session default, pop my password in, and we end up in the more familiar Raspberry Pi desktop. So let's launch Imager, because Nico also let me know that it's available in Raspberry Pi Imager as well. Go to other general purpose OS and Ubuntu, and you'll see that it now says Ubuntu Desktop 2310 64-bit for Raspberry Pi 4, 400, Raspberry Pi 5, all models with 4 gig or more. Now I've already downloaded it because uh, I wanted to have it downloaded separately. So I'll go to Choose OS and go back and back again to Custom. And you can see here it is. Choose Storage. Plug in my SSD drive with a USB SATA cable. And as you can see, it shows up. So we click on that and just click write. And that will write the operating system to the SSD drive. So let's shut this down, because I've already done that. Unplug my M.2 drive, because I don't want it to boot from that. If you've got two USB drives, it will boot from one or the other. Uh, so I just want this one plugged in. And let's press the power button to start that up. Okay, so I wrote the operating system to this SSD drive uh, two or three times, and each time I couldn't get it to boot. Uh, it did come up with an error saying about five volt, five amp, which was what we used to get with the early builds of Raspberry Pi OS, but uh, the fix that I used for that didn't work for this, and I just kept getting errors. So I wrote the image to a micro SD card. I've got a 32 gig micro SD card, and as you can see in the background, it is working. So welcome and English and continue. Let's have a look. You can see it uh, says my mouse battery is low. Uh, KDE Plasma does that as well. They, they seem to think that it's at 10%, but it's, I haven't changed the battery for ages. Uh, so let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got Firefox as the web browser. Do we have Chrome? Uh, so not installed as standard, but they are focusing on Firefox and Wayland. And I read a thing about uh, the GPU support being really good in Firefox in the near future. So that'll be interesting to try. Thunderbird Mail, we've got the Files app, uh, we've got an Office app, we've got the App Store, uh, we've got Help, uh, and this is my little USB stick, which I've got with some ROMs on there. Uh, and if we press the Windows key, as I showed in my known video, you can click on something, you can drag it to another desktop, and you can switch between those desktops. I do like the way that works. So if I put that over on the third desktop here, uh, and then we go back to the second one that's blank, and we can drag something else. So let's drag files over to this one, and, uh, and then we can switch between them all. Yeah, I like the way that works. Oh, it's moved, shifted that one over to the second one. I guess that makes sense, because you don't want a, uh, a blank desktop. But uh, the store is nice. Uh, it's very easy to click on something and install it so you know it doesn't get much easier than that and it's also got a bit of information about it and they sometimes have photos of the apps that are, are featured and so on so yeah all of that works very well if you're into productivity things like all your office programs and things like that you're going to find that in there the brave browser if you want to try the brave browser uh, but i'm going to stick with firefox because that's officially supported and already pre-installed there are various different games and things on here. Although a lot of games that come with Linux tend to be designed for x64 and x86. So if you install them in this way, it doesn't mean they're going to work. Uh, and in fact, for me, uh, I've installed a few games from the store. Uh, Super Tux Kart, I've installed the uh, Sega Saturn emulator. That hasn't worked for me. But something that is universal, so something like Cheese, which uses the camera, tends to work on everything. Uh, although where's it got? It did it did come up and disappear. Now that I said that it, it was likely to work, it didn't work. Now this is obviously an early build. It's the first desktop operating system that's come out apart from Raspberry Pi OS. So uh, you know it's nice to see that. Let's have a look and see if it finds my NAS drive, which it does. And so I can log in and uh, have a look at videos. And let's in fact let's copy that and let's put that on the desktop. 
and we'll see if we can play that. So this is a 1080 video, which I'm guessing is already done. You usually get a little circular bit. It probably happened too quick. Uh, let's copy one of these big, this is a 4K video, this isn't gonna play. Uh, yeah, so this bit here shows you at what progress it is. This is a big 4K, I don't know, how big is it? Let's have a look. Properties, 498 megabytes. So yeah, pretty large, and you can see that's all doing it itself. The settings is always really logical in Ubuntu. I think, you know, this little control center is nice. Uh, there's a screenshot app here. We've got audio, already detected my uh, audio adapter, which is a, I basically use a USB adapter because I want the sound to be set from what I capture, but that's just for me. Ordinarily, it would just come out of the HDMI socket, so that's fine. You can see you've got airplane mode like you would have on your mobile phone. Uh, if I go into the overall settings, uh, it's just super logical. It's really, really easy. Uh, and so things like the apps, we can go through here and we can change various different things about it. All the notifications and everything like that. Again, very much like a mobile phone. Uh, appearance. So I've already played around with it a little bit. Uh, but if I, let's go for this one. There you go. So we've got a nice background there. We've got this one here. Oh, it's all pixelated, look. Although I think I ought to change that. There's something a bit more high res for the video. Let's go, let's go back to what I had. I quite like that one. And you've got light and dark themes on that. It defaults to the light theme. So let's try that file. In fact, is that other file finished? Yeah, there's nothing up here, so that must be finished. So if I try and play this 1080 file, it will play in the videos app, or it would if it didn't think it was broken. Uh, so let's try Dolomite. This 4K for it also doesn't like that as well. I don't know why. Uh, let's try it in the web browser. So this is Firefox. Let's just close down that NAS drive. And uh, if we do Control O, this works in Chrome as well. You have like a music player or a video player. So if I click on test and select, it will start playing it in the browser even though it's a local file. And you can see that's not struggling with that. That's, that looks to be playing all right. That 1080, I guess it's 108060 on a GoPro file. Might as well try the 4K one while we've got it here. But this is a, a TV demo. Oh, I've just shut down the, the web browser. This is a, a TV demo, like an, I think it's an LG one. So it's very high bit rate. So I don't think it will play, although I haven't tried it yet. What do we think? Video can't be played because the file is corrupt. Okay. Uh, let's try a bit of YouTube. So this is the one I always use for demos. Okay, so let's go full screen. Uh, so this is 1080 at first. And you can see it started playing on its own. And that looked like it started off pretty smooth. I would say that's better than Raspberry Pi OS is at this stage. Three frames dropped to 347, five frames dropped, but it doesn't look to be struggling. Okay, let's up this a bit. Oh, it's it just said 4K down there. Auto 4K. Well, let's go for 4K anyway and see what it does. Oh, it's trying to play it. The audio is fine. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely struggling at 4K. So let's try it at 1440, so in between, and see what it copes with. This is at 30 FPS. Ah, 1440 looks all right. Yeah, and it's not dropping many frames at all at 1440. That, that amount of frames dropped is not noticeable. In fact, it doesn't seem to be. It seems to be coping with it absolutely fine. Okay, well, they've done, they've done some good work on the video side of it. That's good to see. Let's just try a bit of Hot UK Deals and uh, BBC Sport. And let's see how well it, it launches that page. I did find um, Firefox didn't feel that great on Raspberry Pi OS. I preferred Chrome, um, but they, they've made some uh, things known about the performance. In, yeah, the, the performance is definitely better in this. So I guess it's probably going to be better in Raspberry Pi OS as, as updates. Yeah, it's definitely smoother. So whatever they've done, they've made that perform better than it does in Raspberry Pi OS, or at least on my test. So let's try Super Tax Cart because it'll be interesting to see how well that runs. Although it doesn't look like it's going to run at all. No. 
It might be worth trying it. Um, so because they've switched to Wayland, certain things that would have worked before might not work now. Uh, although reading through all the changes and, and the reasoning for Wayland, so overall it's going to give us much better performance in the future. Uh, it is a newer system, it's much more efficient. So over time it's definitely going to be better. And, and because the Raspberry Pi is a standard platform, then it tends to get really good support. So I, I definitely predict great things in the future for what we're going to be able to get running on this system. But let's try. So if I go to log out and log out. So now what we can do is log back in, but if we click on it and then click on this little cog down here, we can switch from, I'm pretty sure that's Wayland, to Zorg. So let's log in and just try Super Turks Car and see if that makes the difference. Oh, what happened then? It doesn't let me log in. That's a shame. You can on uh, Raspberry Pi OS, I've got all sorts of things running on uh, my KDE Plasma build, but let's go back to Ubuntu, the Wayland version. Yeah, and that does launch. So it looks like they've just put the Wayland build on this. But installing uh, different desktop environments can make a difference to that. So for instance, if we go into terminal and let's try, let's see if task cell is already there and it's not. sudo apt install task cell and yes. And we need to get NeoFetch on there as well to have a look and see what it says. NeoFetch. So let's run NeoFetch. So Ubuntu 23.10, Raspberry Pi 5, Model B, Rev 1, Kernel 6.5.0, 1920x1080, running GNOME 45, and you can see it's running at 2.4 gig, and I've got an 8 gig uh, model. Right, so let's try Task Cell again. Okay, and let's try installing Mate. See if it works. I'll come back when that's done. So apparently light DM is lighter, so let's pick that. Okay, so after a reboot, it's doing this, so I've officially broken it. But uh, great work by the Ubuntu team, especially on that video performance, and to get an operating system so early for the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, I'll be definitely testing this more, and I'll try that different display manager. Maybe that will make the difference. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.